Today I'm going to show you how you can create personalized Word documents from data in Excel in one go. Now the process I'm going to take you through is called Mail Merge. The purpose of Mail Merge is for you to be able to create personalized letters to many people without actually writing letters to many people. So you have a standard template and you just want to change parts of that and customize it to each person. So you can use Mail Merge to do that. But of course, you can also use this for other purposes as well, not just letters. Use it to dynamically link your Excel data to Microsoft Word. Let's take a look. Assume I have this Word file and I want to use it to send invoices to different customers. This is a template, it's standard. What's different is the content that goes in here and that content comes from Excel. So in this case, I have my customers, my company, the address line one, line two, line three, and the services that I've provided to the customer, the date. Now this is not a date field, it's just a text field and I'm free to input the date in any way I want. Then I have the amount for service line one. Then I have a second line on the invoice where I can add additional services. And then I have amount for that service as well. Then in Excel, I sum up these two values. So any calculations that we need to do, we're going to do it in Excel. I have the invoice number, invoice date, and the email of the person that I want to send these to. All of this information that's dynamic is sitting in Excel. What I want to do is to use Mail Merge to populate this information in separate emails or letters in my Word document. So each person should receive their own invoice. Let's get started with Mail Merge. First step is to go to the Mailings tab and start Mail Merge. You have the option to create letters, email messages, envelopes, labels, directory, and normal Word document. In this case, I'm going to go with a normal Word document. This gets the process started. Now I can select my recipients. This is where I need to create a connection to my Excel file. So I'm going to go with use an existing list and then browse for my Excel file. Mine is sitting right here and it's called outstanding invoices. Now click on open. Next step is to select the right sheet. So I have two different sheets in there. One is called invoices. My information is sitting here and also notice there is a check mark for first row of data contains column headers. This is important because those column headers are going to show up as your merge field names. Now let's go with OK. Notice the moment we created a connection, the other features became activated. If you're wondering how I created this in the first place, well, take a look at this. It's actually a table, but I didn't create this table in Word. I cheated and I created this in a spreadsheet and then I copied and pasted it in here and it just inserted everything as a table. It's just a fast way for me to create these type of templates in Word. Okay, so now that we have our connection, let's go back to mailings and let's make the parts that we need dynamic dynamic. The logo, this part here stays the same. This is the first thing that we need to make dynamic because this is going to come from our Excel file. And just to show you how that looked, I have a separate column here for invoice number and invoice date. So I'm going to select this and replace this static number by going to insert merge field and replacing it with invoice number. Let's do the same for date, select, insert merge field, invoice date. Payment terms, that's the same for everyone, so I'm going to leave that. Next is the company, and then customer, and my address, that's address line one. If you just click directly on the icon, you get the pop-up here, you can also insert fields this way as well. That last one is address line three. Now comes the services, service line one, then date line one, and amount line one. Okay, I'm gonna quickly do line two, and then let's catch up. Moments later. Now finally, let's do the total, insert merge field, and agreed amount total. So remember, this calculation isn't made in Word, it's already done in Excel. We're just bringing the number over. That last part stays the same. 
Okay, so, so far so good. Now we have the ability to preview the results. Just click on preview results. That's the first line that we have, Robert Spear, programming new tool. This is our date text field where I'm flexible to input the date any way I want. And then that's the price and the total. So I can scroll and go to the next field. That's Kim West, James Willard, and so on. So things look good. Let's just center this as well and update the formatting of the numbers. Because on the Excel side, I have the numbers formatted the way I want, but the formatting doesn't come with. We actually have to specify that in Word. To do that, you can right mouse click, toggle field codes, and add the formatting to it right here. So inside the curly braces, just at the end, put a backslash, put the hash sign to specify that this is a number, and the way I want this number formatted is with a thousand separators, so space, comma, and zero would make this a whole number, dot zero zero would add two decimal places, right? So that's the type of formatting you need. I'm just going to copy it because I also need to apply it to here. Before I apply it, let's just make sure it looks correct. When I toggle this back on, I can see my number formatted correctly. So let's go ahead and update the second line, toggle field codes, and paste in the formatting. Now, if you want to add the currency symbol, you can. Let's actually do that for the total. Right mouse click, toggle field code. I'm going to paste in my code, but this time I want the euro symbol here. So just before the zero, right after the comma, put in the symbol that you want. Now let's go ahead and preview the results. That's how it looks. Okay, so now we're ready to merge all of this. Before I finish this off, I just wanna show you how many different options and how much flexibility you have here. You have the ability to edit the recipient list. So in case you don't wanna send an email to everyone or print out every sheet, you can uncheck the ones that you don't need. If you didn't have a template to begin with, you could start off by adding your own address block or adding your greeting line and matching the fields. In this case, we didn't have to do any of that because I already had a starting point. I already had my Excel file and all I had to do was to insert the merge fields. And of course, you can use these as often as you need in your document and anywhere you want in your document. Now let's go ahead and merge this. I can either edit individual documents. This is going to create a new Word document with a separate page for everyone. Just to quickly show you the end result, let's actually try it out. Select it, and now I can decide if I want to merge everything. So all is going to take anything that has a check mark beside it. In my case, everything has a check mark beside it, so it would run it for everything. I can just run it for the current record, or I can decide to run it from one to, let's say, the fourth record and then click on OK. Now it's going to go ahead and create a separate file. And this file has a page for the different records. I can save this and I can print this out as I need. Another option is to print the documents. You again have the same options. This time I'm going to go with all and click on OK. You can print it to a PDF document or just print it directly to your printer and then click on OK. I'll just click on cancel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the last option, which is to send email messages. Now it's important here that you have the email of the people. And in my Excel file, that last column is called email. So it automatically recognizes that there is an email field. If it doesn't find it for you, you can make the selection here, add a subject line and decide if you want to send it as HTML plain text or attachment. Well, plain text is not going to look good here, so I can send it as HTML or attachment. I'll just go with HTML and I'm going to show you how that looks. Let's just go and send it from one to two. I don't want to send everything right now. Click on OK. Now we quickly saw mail merge in the background. Let's switch to email and I'll show you how that looks. This is how the HTML version of the email looks. How does this look if it was an attachment? Let's try that as well. Go back to finish and merge, send email messages. This time go with attachment 
and click on OK. Because it's creating a separate Word file and is attaching it, you actually have to allow this process to happen. It's attaching the first file and now the second file and the process is done. So remember, I didn't run it on all the records. I just ran it on two records. Now, just to show you how that looks, that's the email, that's the attachment. This is for Kim West. So when I open this, this is the invoice for Kim West. Okay, so as you can see, you have a lot of flexibility when you use Mail Merge. This wraps up our Mail Merge tutorial. Many thanks for watching. Thank you for being here, for your thumbs up and for supporting my channel. I really appreciate that and I hope to see you in the next video.